to injustice. See, when we read 2 Timothy 2.15, you know the study, show thyself approved. This is a verse for old and young. Mm -hmm. You don't stop studying the, the Bible because you're a pastor, you're a deacon. I've been in church all my life. I'm 95 years old. That's not, that's not when you stop. You stop studying the Bible when you can no longer study the Bible. And the true wisdom will tell you to keep studying and staying in that word. You stay grounded in the word. So this verse speaks to young and old. Don't, don't let it escape you. Experience. Young and old, you may not have it. You know some people have come to work to you that have been a lot older than you that couldn't work a computer. And you know you've gone to a job and an older person is showing you what they've done. It's the same throughout life. It's the same. So this is a verse for the young and old. Keep studying the word. And that is for the young in Christ to the old in Christ and not by age. Mm -hmm. Amen. The discretion is a great quality. Now, pay attention to this discretion because this is a big quality for us. And it helps because the discretion sets everything else up to work. See, it, it sets it up to work and function in their proper time. Slow to anger. That's a discretion. Speak in love at all times. That's a discretion. Turn the other cheek. That's a discretion. Be patient to respond. That's a discretion. And so on are forms of discretion. You can't blow off at the top and you ain't heard the whole situation. This might not be a situation for you to blow off on. You might just need to sit there and relax. How can you love somebody and you sound angry? Sometimes when we get into a tit-tat with anybody, sometimes it's just good to sit back, breathe, uh-oh, that's that discretion moment, and then address the issue if you have to. You might sit there and say, you know, it ain't even worth me saying nothing about. Mm -hmm. That's that discretion. So it starts all of these things. Mm -hmm. you no, know, I was just going to add to what you're saying because it's, it's, yeah, I like that. Um, and I can see... You know, and I thank God for Solomon that he prayed for wisdom, that, and that's a, te a teacher for us, um, because he was a, a leader of a nation of folk. Yes. Now, imagine if he did not pray to God for this wisdom, and God didn't grant him this wisdom, how to deal with these people, because he said he wanted to know how to handle these people going in and coming out. He wanted to make the, the wise and just decisions, and that can only come from God. You know, to be able to handle a nation of people. I have trouble just handling myself and maybe somebody else, you know, as far as discretions as, as yes. you're taking. But this man was handling a nation. A nation. Even and, a nation of people. And had the ability to say, hey, give me for me. Yes, he, he could have took that. Yeah. But his heart was, he had a good heart. Mm -hmm. He said, no, I'd rather get wisdom to help me judge. Mm -hmm. Just to help others. To help others. Mm -hmm. Slow to anger. Thank God that he is slow to anger. See, you know, we say these things for us, but we better be grateful that God works in discretion because if he gave us what we deserve, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to see his wrath, well, he can bring it right now because yes. we deserve it. Amen. Yes. We know how to behave wisely. That's what we learn with discretion. It sets us up. It's our foundation on how we're going to handle things. Amen. Then in verse 7 it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And for me, this verse always hits me. I always look at this verse in two different ways. Because the fear of the Lord is not the fear, well, oh, he's going to destroy me, he's going to smite me. Right, right. None of that. Mm -hmm. My fear of the Lord comes from where would I be without? Uh oh. Where would I be without the Lord? Who would I be without the Lord? And how could I be without the Lord? And what I come up with are two words lost and nothing. Mm -hmm. That's it.
That's all. I know how I was before I knew the Lord. I knew how I was when I knew the Lord and still was doing things. I was still learning who the Lord was. I'm still learning who the Lord is. But I can tell you I was lost when I didn't know the word. I can tell you my temper was quick. I can tell you I didn't have no discretion. I can tell you I didn't have no patience. I can tell you I can get at you in a minute. But then the Lord stepped in and all of a sudden things started changing. Jeff, I know life might be tough now and then. You can smile. I know things ain't going your way. You can love. I know you're unhappy with where you at. You could be somewhere else. He shows you these things. So where would I be without him? Lost. And what would I be without him? Nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing you say, say the fear of the Lord is submission. Yes. You're, you, Lord, I, I can't do this. I need you. I need your wisdom. I yes. need your grace. I need, I need you, Lord. Take full control yes. of me. That's your first reverence to the Lord. That's the fear I see on my first part. It is a reverence, right, to the next word, to the Lord, that we fear the Lord. As Moses took his shoes off because he was in the presence. He, he knew he was in the presence of the creator of everything. Just think if the world thought that we were in the presence of the Lord on a daily basis. Just think if we said, we're in the presence of the Lord every day. And you know what? We are. Mm -hmm. But do you think in your mind, I'm in the presence of the Lord. Can I sit back and have some discretion? Can I really fear the Lord and understand that he is here, abiding next to me, with me. He sees me. And I'm still falling short. Lord, help us. Help us. Anybody want to read um, Job 28 and 28? And he said to the human race, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to shun evil is understanding. See, I, I go to Job, and there's verses like this in other verses and parts of the Bible. And if you look back at the definition of knowledge and wisdom, I may know the facts for the truth about the Lord. I may. But is it in my daily life? See, there's my wisdom part. Because that is a true fear, to not live as the Lord would have us live. Why would I not want to live as he would have us live? The beginning part of the verse is important because it states that you have to start. You got to start. You got to start. And nowhere in this verse does it tell you to stop. Nowhere. Which is short and short means that all the understanding of life in any facet comes from the Lord. Amen. Exclamation point, period. Don't ask me another question about it. It comes from him. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It comes from the Lord. If we would have feared the Lord, then we would still be in the garden. And you can look at that in Genesis 3, 5 through 7. There is a consequence to not fearing the Lord. There's a consequence. Then the verse tells you who you are if you don't take the wisdom and instruction. A fool! Exclamation point. And another way of saying this, a man that goes against God is a fool. This word alone, the word fool, is used 71 times in the book of Proverbs. So this has to be extremely bad. But I want you to look at some fool traits. Because I want you to see how bad a fool is and what the Bible describes a fool as. Anybody want to read Proverbs 10 and 8? The wise in heart accept commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. One. What about Proverbs 12, 15, and 16? Ways of fools seems right to them. Uh, repeat that. <laughs> the way of fools seems right to them. Yes. But the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. Did you notice there's no discretion on that second verse because it says, the fools show their annoyance immediately. Immediately. <laughs> No discretion. 
no discretion. So when you see this and look at some of the verses about fools, Proverbs 10 and 14, 18 and 23, uh, Proverbs 12 and 15, 13 and 16, chapter 14 and 16, chapter 15 and 5 and 26 and 11, and there's a bunch more. The fool is associated with wickedness and goes against God's ways and they don't even learn from their mistakes. Uh-oh, they don't learn. So instruction ain't happening. Wisdom ain't happening. A fool even denies that God exists. Anybody want to read Psalm 53 and 1? emphasize this because it says the fool has said in his heart <laughs> not just lip service but in his heart he feels it deep inside that there is no God he means this I don't know how big a fool you would be to say that corrupt are they uh oh so once again you're going against God and have done abominable iniquity not just iniquity, but abominable. There is none that doeth good. None of them. Don't deny the Lord. What I am saying is don't be a fool. Don't be. And pray that you don't have to call somebody one. Because when you read about this fool in the Bible, I used to wonder why my grandmother popped me in the mouth. When you say somebody was a fool, and then I start seeing some of these things, and this lesson just brought it out even more. A fool is wicked. A fool goes against the Lord. It does, he doesn't or she doesn't want wisdom. They don't want instruction. And they keep being repeat offenders. They don't stop. In verse 8 it says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Now Solomon starts talking like he's talking to his son. And this is a word of encouragement where we are being told to take our parents' instruction. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know, that's hard nowadays. We don't, we got a little extra conversation when mom and dad say something. They might have some wisdom. They might get you out of some trouble. They might lead you down the right way. Now be patient at this time because we are all slow to receive wisdom from our parents. You know, when we were younger, we had to wait until our mind and hearts becomes more receptive, even when we got older. Even if you look at Solomon, his one son that is stated in the Bible, I've only seen one. There might be more. I've only heard of one. There's one son that stated in the Bible, he was not wise. So he had a prime example from his loins. Here's the king that got all the wisdom that asked the Lord for the wisdom to share with the people. And he can't get it to his son because his son is not receptive. You ever hear that? Kids, listen to me. Nope. Do as I say. Nope. It happens. It happens. And this is the one that asked for the wisdom. And his son ain't listening to him right now. The teaching of a child is also the responsibility of both parents. Both. And I don't care what your circumstances are. Married, child, y'all separate, whatever it is. It's still the responsibility of both parents. Mom, do your job. Dad, do your job. Step up and do right. This is wisdom. This is what we're supposed to do. A man is going to teach a young man some things that a woman can never teach him. And a woman is going to teach him some things a man can never teach him. And the same thing goes for the daughter. That's both parents' instruction. I don't care if y'all don't get along. Do something right for that child. Mm. You know, can 
if I add some brother Go teacher, ahead. even in even in a situation where there may may be an absent of uh, a parent or both parents, you know, uh, um, this is telling us the importance that there are people in your lives that we should take instructions from. There yes. could be like an elder that is placed in your life. They don't have to be biological, mm -hmm. but there is some someone a guardian placed in your life that's going to give you the good instructions, that's going to give you that wisdom. And, and what this, this, this uh, uh, lesson is saying to, to me is the importance of listening to the, 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 the elder person that's wise. That's we wise. have to receive that. Yeah. Not to be that fool as you were just, you know, speaking of a, a verse uh, back there, to reject it. You, we, we don't want to do no. that. Take it. If, if you look at the book of Proverbs, and we said Solomon wasn't the only one that wrote the whole book. Mm -hmm. He was a collector of wisdom himself. I can tell you right now, Mother Wyndham, mm -hmm. I sat on 23rd Street many a day with circus peanuts and hot coffee mm -hmm. and going to Burger King. Soaking it up. Soaking it up. I hear you. Mr. Joe Crockett, mm -hmm. soaking it up. My grandparents, soaking it up. Wisdom is wisdom. Mm -hmm. And if they shared with you, be receptive. Yeah. Be receptive. Parents, do your job, but don't think the Lord ain't provided wisdom still for us. We can still move on, but parents, you do have a responsibility. And if you are both living in there, you better do it. You better do it. Parents should offer some form of wisdom, if not for anything else, like I said, in the betterment of your child. Instruction is important here also because instruction comes in all forms from instructing them through love because nothing's wrong with a man kissing and hugging their son. I kiss mine, they'll tell you, too much. I hug them, too much. When, I, when they with me, I'm on them, they'll tell you. I'm on them. Nothing wrong with that. We need to see more of that. Nothing wrong with a woman hugging and kissing a dog and vice versa all the way around. Love is love and they need it. They might not get it out in this world, but they can get it from their mama and daddy. An instruction of punishment. Uh-oh. <laughs> you said what I'm going to say. Instruction of punishment and correction. That's still love. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid of the punishment and correction because the Lord does it to those he loves. And if you love yours and you know this world going to be mean to them, get them straight. Because if you don't, the world will. And we should do it in, to those we love to correct them. It hurts to get at your child. I know. I can tell you. I used to cry with mine. They'll tell you. My dad in his room crying after the whooping. And we have a hug session. But I needed to do it. My grandfather used to tell me, it hurt to whoop you. And I'd be like, man, I'm hurt. What are you talking about? <laughs> but when I saw my grandfather crying out of the disappointment and scared me being down at them railroad tracks on Wayne Street, getting ready to get ran over by a train because we was throwing rocks and jumping in and out the track, I didn't find out about it until I had my own. And then I knew how much it hurt Get at your child. This verse speaks to raising the child. You got to raise them up with wisdom. This world ain't kind to them. Everybody that beat them ain't going to love your child like you are. And if they can't get love from you, where can they get it at? Verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Solomon speaks to his son and tells him that, in short, don't hang out with them. You hanging out with the wrong crowd. If you know your boys coming over and they say, we going to steal a car. We going up to steal some shoes. We going to do dirt. Don't go with them. If you want to stay out of sin, don't go to a place where it's going to happen at. Because you ain't strong enough yet, son, to show them that they need to do what you do. And 
until you get there with this instruction and wisdom, you stay away from that. Because even if you weren't doing anything, this world will tell you you're guilty by association. And it looks guilty by association. So don't partake in these activities. Please know that we all sin. All of us. But if you have a friend that is doing as I said, don't fall into the same thing. If you're my age, a little younger, you probably got friends who was locked up and say, man, Jeff, man, brother Shannon, man, brother Malachi, man, sister Leary, I wish I would have done like you did when I was younger. Because they just took 12 years of my life. I'm on books. Can you come in and put some money on my books? Uh, man, I'm having problems because I've been locked up because I did something that I should have done when I was younger and now I'm struggling to make ends meet to find a job. Don't do it. Stay away from those things. When you get stronger in the word and you know the wisdom of the Lord, then you can go into them things and you will be the light in there. They will turn away from it because they see you. So it speaks to, to raising your child again. In other words, you can't do wrong if you don't consent to doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And this is with man and with Satan. Mm -hmm. See, you you got to give in to the devil's attention. You got to allow him. You got to say, okay, hey, I'll let you do it. That, that caught my eye. I'm going to do what you said. And if you look at what was stated in verse 18, you'll see these things. But just remember, you have to stay strong. That's another part of that discretion. Should I go and do this? Hmm, let me take a second. This could happen. This could happen. And this could happen. None of them are good. So I know it's bad. So I'm not going to do what I should do. Mm -hmm. That discretion, like I said, it sets it all into play. Mm -hmm. And you need discretion when you're making some of these calls. You need wisdom when you make some of these calls. And sometimes you got to sit back. If you remember, Jesus stopped and prayed. That was that time of discretion for him. Oh, I got to pray to the Father, see what he says to do. Even changing water to wine. He didn't just say, oh yeah, I can do it. He said, it ain't my time. Let me pray. And then he was told to do it. Mm -hmm. Discretion sets all these into play. Go ahead. You know, brother, the, uh, teacher, to add to that, where he's, he, uh, um, we can look at what's taking place in, in the world today with all these this rioting and, and uh, uh, that's taking place. You know, there's peer pressure, and that's what we're, we're talking about. That some of our children are facing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some of our nieces, some of our nephews, they're facing, and and it's real. You know, because I, I don't want to believe that every teenager or young person we've seen out there smashing windows, uh, 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 looting, stealing, that that was their first choice. I believe they, uh, they, allowed, they made a bad decision, and some, some may were lured in by the bad uh, uh, choices that they made, made or the decision, just like the lesson is saying, don't allow that peer pressure to uh, overwhelm you, to, to right. consume you. You know, make the right choice because of the choices you make, there's, you know, consequences that come behind that. And, and, and I'm sure that loud voice, you know, in some, uh, uh, if not many, was saying that this is not the right thing to do. This ain't it. This ain't it. This is not the right way. Do, it, it's, you have to do it differently. Yeah. I understand your anger. I understand your frustration. I see the injustice, too, what God is saying. But this is not the wisdom. You're not, you know, That's not exercising wisdom. wisdom right yes. here. See, the wisdom would tell you, step back. Amen. There you go. Step back. You can't make an enemy by being violent towards an enemy. Mm -hmm. You can only do that in love. And you doing all of these things, you see what it's doing. Yeah, exactly. And it's usually affecting your area. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. usually the one that suffer. Your stores go up in prices. Your mm -hmm. everything got to be cleaned up. You get the inconvenience of streets being shut down and blocked off and all that mm -hmm. stuff. Discretion. Step back. Understand. Yes. Yeah, you're angry, but step 